welcome to Storyboard. I'm Shubani Gharat. It is the week of Can Lion Festival of Creativity and Can Lion, as we all know, is the epicenter of global creativity and celebration of the best advertising and marketing across the world. But this year was all about AI. Storyboard 18 was on ground in South of France to get the biggest stakeholders to tell us about what the future holds. First up, we caught up with Philippe Krakowski, Global Chief Executive Officer, Interpublic Group one of the largest ad holding companies and spoke to him about AI, media trends, insights, shaping strategies and more. Listen in. Hello and welcome to CNBC TV 18. Philippe, it's lovely to have you here. Thank you so much. I and appreciate it. And we're here at the Mastercard Villa, a gorgeous setting. Beautiful setting. And one of the things that everyone is talking about right now, of course, is AI generative AI specifically. Yes. Now, I want to just quickly get your view on uh, on how this technology that has scaled faster than anything that we've ever seen before. And it's put the power in the hands of the end user. And which is why I think a lot of people are fearing it, are anxious about it, are curious about it and excited about it. But tell me, what's your take on how it will change the media and advertising business? Well, I think that um, media and advertising, perhaps it will have disparate effects. So as with so much technology, what I think it does is it creates a platform and it's something which in conjunction with human expertise can unlock value and, and opportunity. We've incorporated AI into our business for quite a few years now on the media side. Right. So machine learning has been a big part of the kind of analytics work we do mm -hmm. and a lot of what happens when you've got data and then you begin to use it to project and predict um, and just make smarter decisions. So um, data decisioning and AI have mm -hmm. already been part of the business for I would say the last three to five years. Right. Um, specifically to what you're asking, I think it's very early days mm -hmm. um, and the question is really going to be the ways in which we can tap into, I was just speaking in fact to one of our senior creative people, and they have been training the creative department on how do you use prompts to then accelerate or create more, you know, see more avenues and opportunities for mm -hmm. your creative thinking. So I think it's early to say how it's going to impact that part of the business. Right. It will clearly allow us to be uh, more efficient, but I also think that um, it should free some of our people to spend time with clients working on higher order kinds of creativity or higher order kinds of marketing problems. But to, to this point, I think anybody who tells you that they know precisely what impact it's uh -huh, going to have uh -huh. is probably going to be wrong mm -hmm. or they're probably making mm -hmm. a promise they can't keep. Mm -hmm. So, uh, okay, keeping AI in mind, of course, but besides that, what are you doing over uh, the next year or so to make the group future ready? Well, I think, I think we're extending certain areas where we were perhaps first or ahead of the game. Um, clearly, data, first party data expertise. Mm -hmm. So the management of first party data. And that and is then, where you were ahead of the game. Uh, that is part of, you know, with Axiom, mm -hmm. we were early. And it is combining that, particularly with um, our media business, has been a big driver of, of our recent um, of our recent performance, right. I think the big area that we will focus to your to the point of your question is really going to be um, in in every aspect of commerce, mm -hmm. and then data has been connected to media, um, and now the question is into the advertising technology ecosystem, and so I think the 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 opportunity and the challenge is to take data and connect it to the marketing technology ecosystem. Mm -hmm. So to the, the marketing technology platforms and to the ways in which marketers um, are uh, using both their owned and their earned platforms and assets okay. to connect directly with the consumer and, and basically um, go direct to the consumers mm -hmm. or to, to, drive, to drive the commerce component mm -hmm. of every kind of business and every, you know, every interaction with consumers. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, so those absolutely. are the places we're focused on. Let me now switch tracks and come to India. Okay. Uh, you have, of course, been a great champion of India very early on, even perhaps over China. 
Uh, let me just uh, get a sense from you. What do you, uh, in India, for instance, over the past few years, it's, it's gained creative clout. Absolutely. It has significant business clout in the world today. Yep. Uh, so what is your take of the Indian market? And from IPG's perspective as well, what are you doing? What are you doing in the market right now? Where are you investing? What are your focus, focus areas? Well, as you say, I think for us, we've always been, we've over-indexed to India, right? So if you think about our scale as a holding company at a global level, where we're the fourth largest, whereas in India, we're the second largest. Um, if I think about other markets where we are, we have significant presence. Um, in India, we also have significant and very balanced presence. Where mm -hmm. all, many of our agencies are well represented. All of the disciplines are well represented. And I think it's been a function of the economic opportunity that the market represents. Right. So when you think about, you know, you're compounding six on six on six, you know, in this day and age, that's clearly a very dynamic market. Mm -hmm. And it's becoming a very large market in absolute terms. Um, when you think about, obviously, as we all know, the, 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 the scale of the population and whether it is Today or three weeks from now will become the, you know, the largest, um, you know, national population globally. Mm -hmm. But it's also always interested us because it is a place where you've got this very large group of highly educated um, potential colleagues, workers. You know, we we probably have been in the three thousand five hundred or so. I mean, we we have a large employee base there for us. Um, but I think some of the trends we're talking about play to India's advantage, some of the geopolitical trends, clearly. Mm -hmm. But the degree to which our business has become technology-enabled marketing service has meant that we've always seen it as a place where we want to um, anchor um, and root some of our areas of expertise. So for right now, we're, we're building a five, 600 person strong global capability center mm -hmm. for our media business, which is our most digitally and technology advanced right. business, which in another few years will be 1,000, 1,200 people. Mm -hmm. So we continue to feel very good about that. And then as an advertising market, one of the things that I always find sort of fascinating and a little bit mind blowing is, so it's the fastest growing in absolute terms, it's you know at 12, 13, 15%. It's the fastest growing advertising market. Mm -hmm. But um, on a advertising dollar invested per person basis, yes. it is at one one hundredth of mm -hmm. the concentration that you would see in Western Europe or the United States. Is it it's at it's at one tenth of what China is at. And so if you think about China as a as a logical and obvious analog, I think we're going to see a lot of growth um, in the intensity of the advertising mm -hmm. investment that happens in India on the part of a lot of global brands. Right. So we, we're, still, we're still quite keen. And in this super interesting conversation, Yannick Balore, chairman of his group, says AI might kill average creative directors. Let's hear his take on AI regulation with regards to AI and much more in this chat with Delshad Irani. So Yannick, let me just begin uh, with asking you. So you took over 10 years ago and you have seen Havas through this transformatory process. And now again, there's been a sort of rejig of the brand. Tell me what are some of, your, some of the objectives of that? What are you setting out to signal to the world about Havas? Yeah, I mean, in the past 10 years, you're right, it's going to be my 10 years anniversary next month at the helm of, of Havas. I mean, the world has changed. Can the Croisette has changed a lot in 10 years and we have changed. We have been pioneer of integration. I mean, as a holding company, we put everything back together in one company. Today, it's one of us, one culture, a group of 22,000 people operating like in more than 100 countries. We put meaningfulness at the core of our mission because we believe we have the responsibility to make a meaningful difference to the world through uh, uh, the brands uh, for which we operate their communication. We partner with Vivendi, a world leader in content and entertainment back in 2017. And when we talk about entertainment, it links to creativity, and creativity is maybe the, the, the most important expression of a good work, and uh, this is a creative festival, and so far we are off to a very good start, by the way. We won many, many gold lions, so we cannot be more happy than uh, what we are today. And uh, last but not least, we have been so innovative 
doing those past 10 years. I mean, putting digital at the core, building data and analytics, and everything that's going on today with AI would be uh, such a great adventure. I'm glad you mentioned AI because, of course, AI is all the rage right now. We're in the middle of this huge hype cycle around AI. Uh, tell me, uh, just keeping the hype cycle away, you, you're, you're hearing all these conversations here about AI. What has struck you? Where is the real conversation about AI happening in your view? And what sort of impact will AI have, generative AI specifically, what sort of impact will it have on the advertising business, on the media business? in say the next couple of quarters you know i'm not yeah. talking about five years but, but uh, the reality uh, now it's a fantastic question but i don't think it's it's hype i think it's a, it's a real revolution you know as a person i'm a i'm an early adopter to every new technology so last december i was trying for the first time generative ai at the beginning of december i was struck by the power of generating text and the power of generating images even for my greeting cards for my new year's cards that i was sending to my friends and partners Wow. I used AI. I used Mid Journey. I was doing the prompt myself with the team, and I was trying. So since then, we have been implementing AI everywhere uh, in our creative agencies to make sure we can use those powerful tools to help the team to become more efficient, more effective. It's already implemented and a game changer. We just announced a couple hours ago the launch of a new production branch called Pros and Pixels mm -hmm. that will be hugely generated, powered by AI, by generative uh, AI. So I think AI is not something from the future, it's already here. A lot of things that we are doing today, the teams have been working through AI and it will be, continue to be a, a revolution for the industry. But I think for the good, because when you talk about creativity, I hear some people saying maybe AI will replace creative director. Or mechanized creativity. Or mechanized creativity. This is where I think it is a fantastic opportunity for the advertising industry. Because if you allow me to take an analogy with what happened in the years 1830s with the invention of photographies. Photographies hasn't killed uh, painters. It has killed average painters. So I believe AI might kill average creative. average creative directors. And this is where, as a group, with the best strategic planners, with the best creative directors, we will be able to stand out and to make our brand stand out for the world. So I think it's going to be a golden age for true creative advertising campaigns. Mm -hmm, absolutely. Uh, let me just follow up on that question uh, because, of course, a lot of people are fearing for their jobs and this is across sectors. But in term, from, from your view, from, say, you know, a media maven's view, yeah. as well as, you know, as you, as you run this large company, uh, what sort of impact do you see in terms of job? Is the, There's a hype cycle I mean, and there's a fear cycle. I mean, in general, every mm -hmm. revolution brings a change in the way jobs are structured. Right. But all the revolution that uh, we have seen in the past two centuries, it has created more jobs than it has destroyed jobs. So mm -hmm. I think at the end of the day, it will be positive, but for sure it will change. I mean, today, just to give you an example on creativity, a creative guy can make, uh, uh, can create an image in 20 minutes where it was taking five hours uh, yesterday. So we would gain a lot of efficiencies. Speed. Back offices as well. I mean, IT, legal, finance, HR, mm -hmm. will be revolutionized through AI. But at the end of the day, at the same time, if we are making some savings, let's say on the one end, on the other hand, we are hiring uh, lots of prompt writers, we are training all our people, so we have new yeah. coaches on AI. Mm -hmm. Because out of 22,000 people that have us, by year end, before December 31st, we will train our 22,000 people on AI. So I think it will create a job on the other one. Right. I mean, prompt engineering is a yeah. job that has just emerged. Uh, it didn't exist last year. We didn't know Absolutely. what a prompt was. Absolutely. <laughs> It is time for a short break. On the other side, we have Harit Nagpal, MD and CEO Tata Play, who is giving us an insight into the OTT aggregator ecosystem and the way forward.